Thank you all for coming to this afternoon session. Um, I have three goals this afternoon. The first is to share a little bit about our program structure at Point Blue Conservation Science, what we're doing to address engaging agriculture as being part of the solution for climate change, and then the third part is talking about how we're integrating soil carbon data with grazing data with our partners at Pasture Map, some of whom are here in the room. And the driving question for that third part is what information do you all wanna see and how do you wanna see it? Because I think our big challenge right now is not just collecting more data, but it's making that data actionable and immediately available because we're ready to make a change. All right, just a little bit about Point Blue Conservation Science. We started in 1965 as Point Reyes Bird Observatory, and I like to think about the organization back then as all birds all the time. And in 2011, we started a working lands program where there were a bunch of folks who were kind of young guns or youngish guns in the field who said, you know, in order for us to achieve the types of conservation goals that we think are important to make a change in our landscape, we absolutely must be engaging private lands. And as a result, rangelands are now a critical part of our climate smart conservation initiatives. And when you think about this, it makes total sense because rangelands account for just under a third of the ice-free land area on our planet. That is non-trivial. When I think about all of the positive change that we can make in this landscape, engaging rangelands is somewhere that we can absolutely get traction in our lifetime. In a really practical sense, what this means is that landowners, managers, and stewards are our conservation partners. I see some of them in the room today. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Lisa Marie. And we couldn't do what we're doing in conservation science without these partnerships. Um, this brings me to the heart and soul of our program in the Working Lands Initiative at Point Blue which is a team of partner biologists who I like to think about as hyper-dedicated, whip-smart young scientists. Many are a few years out of a bachelor's degree or right out of a master's, and they sit in NRCS, or Natural Resource Conservation Service offices throughout Northern California. And we're deeply grateful to our partners at NRCS. I see we have Bob Gillespie here in the audience today. Um, because our partner biologists through this public-private partnership have access to all of the resources in the NRCS offices. Oh, if people are gonna take pictures, let me put up the next set of stats. Okay, now it's better. Um, we have access to all of the resources in the NRCS offices, and what our partner biologists do is they lend their expertise in wildlife biology, because we did start as Point Reyes Bird Observatory, in soil science, and in community ecology to monitor birds, soil carbon, and vegetation on the ranches um, wh where we partner. Um, I love putting up these stats during talks because I'm so proud that since our program started in 2011, we've had um, consistently about 14 to 15 partner biologists at a time that have leveraged more than $30 million in conservation funding. Since that investment is matched one-to-one -one by landowners, it's more than uh, $60 million of conservation investment in total. And this means influencing more than 760,000 acres where conservation practices have been planned and implemented. And much of that is rangeland. Um, Aldo Leopold is one of the thought leaders for our program and the way that we think about stewardship, but what I wanted to talk about more than thought leaders is data, because I'm a data dork. And what I did um, most recently, this is hot off the presses, 
is I looked at about 1,100 conservation contracts that our partner biologists helped develop with land stewards in collaboration with NRCS. And I wanted to draw your attention to prescribed grazing, which is that column in the matrix right in the middle that has the thin red line circling it. And I looked at these conservation practices the way that a community ecologist looks at a whole bunch of plants that are growing together. And I asked the question, what tends to co-occur in the same space? And things that have a positive relationship are represented with those teal boxes. Things that have a neutral relationship are represented with the gray boxes. And things that have a negative relationship are represented with the gold boxes. And what I want to draw your attention to is that prescribed grazing tends to co-occur with infrastructure practices like fencing, pipelines, water pumps, troughs. And intuitively, all of this makes a ton of sense because that's the infrastructure that needs to be in place to draw animals to different parts of a property, hold them there, and keep them in place so that we can get the types of animal impacts that we hope for to support ecological outcomes. Kind of like what you saw in Peter Bick's film on uh, Wednesday night. All of that's supported by person power, intelligence, on the ground experience, and a little bit of infrastructure. If anyone wants to talk about this type of analysis um, in more detail, I'm happy to at the end. Or you can ask questions later, or I can email you about it. But the thought that I want to highlight right now is that every single acre counts. Um, with those 760,000 acres that we've influenced with conservation practices since the program began in 2011, if you think about each acre being 208 feet by 208 feet, if there's one additional ounce of forage per square foot, that increase is non-trivial when you think of across a whole acre. It's 1.4 additional tons of forage. Same thing if we're thinking about increases in soil carbon. 1% increase in soil carbon translates to 16,000 to 26,000 additional gallons of water holding capacity per acre. And across 20 acres, that's a whole acre foot. In water-limited areas like our Mediterranean climate here in Northern California, that's absolutely fantastic. Same thing for carbon sequestration. We're looking at megagrams. We're looking at quantities of carbon that really can make a positive difference. When we go out and walk the land with our collaborating landowners, one of the most important questions that I think we have the opportunity to engage on is what type of information do you want to see and how do you want to see it? What Cindy was saying before, the structure of a traditional land-grant university started out, you know, historically as being somewhat top-down. You know, we share information out to the community. And I think that we are turning that paradigm around in the way that Cindy was saying. We're partnering with the community saying what are you doing that's working well? Where are we falling short? What do we need to measure next? So this brings me to the partnership with Pasture Map that I'm so excited about because through a conservation innovation grant through the Natural Resource Conservation Service, we have an opportunity to develop a platform where we can view grazing records and soil carbon data in the same platform. And our whole goal is to have all of these data play nicely together. So we can actually walk around with a paper map, or if you're digitally inclined, a smart phone or tablet, and know where we're standing on the landscape and say, this is how it was grazed. This is when it changed. Here's what our outcome is for soil carbon. Um, we have some mock-ups of what the platform currently looks like, if any of you are managing grazing or managing soil carbon, I would love to talk to you about your thoughts on this. And I would like to hear what you like, and most importantly, what you don't like. Because we tend to use things that are easy and things that we like. And I think where the rubber hits the road is kind of finding that entry point for usable data. Um, 
I want to leave you with a thank you to all of our collaborators. Um, thank you all so much for being here. And I'm glad I remembered my email. So if anyone wants to talk about this in more detail, it's up there. Thank you.